Hey guys, how's everything going? This is Jay, sir. So one or two months ago, there was a tweet uh, from some, I don't know, tech influencer said, uh, what should do, you do about the legacy TypeScript errors when you are doing some like migration from JavaScript code base? Uh, at that time, I mentioned uh, we should just, uh, just ignore them. Um, turn the t TypeScript uh, on and ignore the errors from the files that you don't touch. And and uh, fix the errors when you touch some files. Uh, at that time, only a few agree with me. Most of the people said, oh, okay, that uh, you are mentioning some bad uh, practices. Uh, it's not safe, but yeah, here in this post, I'm going to demonstrate what I thought and uh, how exactly um, we, we could um, uh, address such kind of issues by being progressive. So the problem statement is, um, is simple, so usually, uh, when we adopt TypeScript, is actually add some restrictions uh, to our code base, right? Um, it's going to our code is not loose anymore. We add typings and uh, type check. Well, forbidden, uh, forbid from uh, us from uh, doing some bad bad practices. Um, so basically, we are making our life harder, and uh, it is even harder in two uh, from two aspects. The first one is TypeScript introducing new features along the way is evolving all the time and another one is uh, your, your code base just just the growth in size uh, uh, let alone that for the for the projects uh, from legacy code base it's huge and uh, anything you want to change for the uh, TypeScript config it might impact so many lines of code and uh, it basically makes it impossible to make some fundamental changes in the config so the problem is it's pretty clear. Um, it's tough to do some uh, code changes. So my proposal um, is um, do them progressively. Uh, by progressive, I mean because let's say let's say your code base in TypeScript in current state, current settings, you want to make it stricter, um, but your current version is already being. Um, shipped to the production, right? Uh, it's running. So um, if you don't touch them, uh, the safety, I would say, the type script, um, the type safety, it doesn't change. It, it doesn't make things worse. So it's totally fine if you see some type errors, but just ignoring them, uh, it's totally fine. Um, but uh, with this, with this in mind, we can actually try to uh, fix the issues progressively by fixing the errors, fixing the issues um, for the files you're touching each pull request. That's what I said. Um, well, the, the idea is being progressive, but you can implement it in your own ways based on your requirements. Like you can um, set up a, set up some uh, like uh, um, extra, extra project, like code improvement project and tackle them um, like file by file or flow by flow or rule by rule. Um, talking with the uh, PM and ask for some resources for it. Uh, but my proposal here is like make it less uh, to to accomplish it with less footprint. Um, yeah, this is my uh, my proposal here. Um, what what the benefits of this is like uh, not only um, it adds extremely small burden for uh, the code editors um, because they only need to touch the files when they're actually f uh, touching it. The second uh, benefit I would say is that um, you don't need special um, like resources on the QA or on testing for it um, because let's say if you're not touched some part of the code base if you touch them even if, even if it is for uh, the TypeScript um, it's it's not safe right because you you need some extra testing for it it's not very uh, it, it is risky um, especially for TypeScript sometimes you need to change the code structure not only the typings um, so yeah um, I think I think the approach of being progressive could ha uh, grant us these two benefits so you'll say hmm, hmm, that's yeah w what does it exactly look like so here's a code demo about uh, about progressively migrate uh, the no implicit any to true uh, suppose we have a huge code base uh, with the, this setting off um, like uh, for example, JavaScript code project, it's basically no implicit any to true. Yeah, we want to migrate them, so how should we do it? Um, so the idea, my idea is just uh, 
The first step is to create a script that filter out errors reported by TSC. Uh, TSC is the compiler. Uh, in it, we would uh, um, collect two kinds of errors. The first one is newly introduced errors. Um, the second one is existing errors, but uh, but uh, exists in the touched files. So this is a script we want to create. After we're done with the script, we will set up CI uh, with the above script to block the pull request. So if you make a pull request, we will run a script on the CI and um, and and uh, uh, check the new check the above two errors um, from the uh, target branch and the source branch and uh, to see if there are any errors that we need to fix. Another uh, another step is to create a script to track errors I mean, things in any uh, across the code base and create a dashboard. And, um, and we can track the progress, and uh, even better, we could just, uh, attribute the impact to individuals. So you can clearly see what kind of, um, uh, how many errors are tackled from a specific pull request, and who is creating the pull request. So you can see that's four steps. Uh, generally covers there are uh, several steps about um, tackling any issues. What right? The first one is analyze. Uh, we're creating a dashboard to analyze current what kind of issues we are we have. And then we're creating a pr approach. Uh, yeah, this is the approach we'll take. Uh, we'll create a script and and uh, block the pull request by CI. And then we will s verify. Um, uh, we will see the uh, impact. I mean, I mean, uh, we will go to check. Um, we will check uh, the impact from each individual or each um, pull request. So for the script, the requirement is simple, right? Um, we have two commit hashes, and then we would output the errors that we need to fix. So simple. So in order to uh, create a script, um, I've created a, um, a demo, demo repository just showing um, the stuff. Uh, you can see that inside of it, there are two files, ATS and BTS. Obviously, we are using implicit, implicit any. BTS, there are also implicit any errors. And in TypeScript config, it's very loose. Uh, there's no strict setting. It's just the basic uh, include and uh, outer. Yeah, just TypeScript config is like this. And um, so far, so good because we're not being strict. Um, so there's no errors. But if we turn no implicit any to true, uh, we would get the errors like this. Um, by the way, the code snippet like this is rendered by two slash. Um, you can just search on. You know, the web to support on your own block. So this uh, mimics the fact that if we have this large code space with a lot of errors, we don't want to fix them all at once. So in order to make it progressively, we need to do what? We need to filter the errors that by diffing of the two commits, right? The first step, uh, the first function I'll create is collect the uh, TypeScript TSC diagnostics. This is the internal you can think of it as issues. Uh, it's just a di diagnostics in a TypeScript way of thinking of the world. Um, so it's pretty simple. You can search on the internet, find this such piece of code, read the config file, and then we add extra compiler options, which is we force no implicit any, no matter what the settings you have. And then we would create a program, and then we would call it get pre emit diagnostics. So yeah, I think this is somehow just generates us the type type errors uh, before emitting. Uh, I don't actually know the exact life cycle, but this actually offers us uh, the information we want. So anyway, uh, w by this function, we are able to extract the type errors from some code base. Yeah. The next step, yeah, you can see that if we run above a uh, function uh, in the code base we have, we would get two errors, right? The first one is a uh, uh, from ATS, you can see the second one is BTS. Um, we get the start position, and uh, this is the error for um, this code is the um, error code, and this is the message exactly what we see uh, here. So perfect. And then the it will be straightforward, right? We have two commits. For each commit, we check out code and run above code, get the errors, and then do the diffing of. Oh yeah, we normalize the error like this, uh, and then we can uh, easily hash them by the by the just uh, use the uh, string uh, JSON stringify and uh, to try to dedupe uh, the errors into commits. 
So yeah, you can see uh, here we just get all diagnostics, which is act basically the code from above. And then the next function is async. We would like to diff the the A issues. So this is from command. This is to command. And you can see that we first we check out the from, and then uh, we get the issues and check out to get the issues. And then uh, there are two steps here. First one is we create a um, map uh, to hold the mapping between the hash and the issues. And the next one is we will get the changed files from two commits. And then we will filter out the uh, issues in two uh, by checking two conditions. One, if this issue doesn't exist in the previous, uh, in the from version, then it is newly created issue. We need to fix them and no matter where they are. The second one is if the I I issue exists, pre is pre-existing, but it is included in our changed files. So yeah, only report new errors and errors from touched files. So by this, so now uh, let's try it out. If we add a new comment in the BTS like this, introducing a new comment because it's just a comment, we're not introducing any type issues, new type issues. So this should be exactly the same of the type issues. And we will run the uh, above uh, function against the from, uh, this is the older commit. Oh no, this is older commit, this is new commit, which includes our changes here. We touch the bt.ts. And then what do we get? We would actually get um, like this. We would actually get the uh, the error from bt.ts. The parameter t implicitly has any and any type. So you see that now um, in, uh, we can easily check what kind of issues we need to fix in each commit, right? Uh, from the past uh, and also uh, giving it a, a history. With this, what, what can we do to further is that we could apply this issue, uh, script into a CI script. In CI, we get the webhook from the GitHub um, and uh, we can easily get the from uh, source branch and target branch. We can just run this code and then get the error. And then, and of, of course, uh, we also get the information about the pull request itself, and then we can call the GitHub API to do the commenting, um, and uh, yeah, do, do some fancy stuff there. But this is the base. Um, yeah, the full code is here on GitHub. You can take a look. Um, it's pretty simple. Anyway, so you you see, you guess the idea of me saying being pro progressive is that uh, uh, keeping the existing um, state as it is and only do incremental changes as as necessary. If we take this approach, there might be no ending for this such process. So there might be always be some any errors in your code base, but it doesn't matter because if we don't touch, fix the error soon, it means that the code is not touched for a long time, right? Uh, it basically means that code has a lower priority. This is not hot. Uh, oh yeah, we, we can we can um, express it in such way. So we are by this approach, we're fixing the issues by the hotness of the code. Uh, if it is hot, we need to fix it right away. If it is not hot or nobody touches it, it possibly would be uh, maintenance maintenance mode, and uh, we don't need to touch them at all. Um, this approach could be about pro applied not to not uh, no implicit any, but any kind of tasks that actually in, uh, relating to the code base stuff. Um, I think it is even useful for um, some something outside of TypeScript, I would say. Um, so generally, find the minimum path, critical path to fix. That's what I want, all I want to say. Be progressive. Hope it helps. See you next time. Bye.